Welcome back, scoundrels. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, I am no longer part of the bad audio quality gang. We are just good audio quality gang because we're back in the studio. Um, if you would like to be a scoundrel, if you'd like to be part of the gang, there is a subscription button down below. And for everyone that presses the subscription button, I promise to not kill a miner in Eve Echoes. So, you know, every person that subscribes, I'll have a tally of how many miners I will not kill in Eve Echoes, which is, you know, very important because this is a mining video. Uh, before we also get into the video, if you would like to join an alliance, Valhalla, the corporation that I am a part of, is recruiting. Link in the description below. Now, why would you want to join Valhalla? Well, myself uh, and Captain Benzie are part of these two corporations. Captain Benzie, obviously, with his cat skulls, I'm currently in Valhalla. And we are joined together in an alliance called the Golden Horde. So if you want to be part of mine or Captain Benzie's alliance, make sure you get involved in either or of our corporations so that we can take over uh, wherever the hell we are in space right now, which is currently southeast. So... Today we're going to be doing mining. Now, Captain Benzi has already produced a getting started an adventure training guide, which I'll link in the description below. I will not be doing like in-depth basics that Benzi did, but what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be comparing uh, venture fits, um, and then we're going to be talking a little bit about strip mining, uh, talking about the mechanics of mining and the mechanics of strip mining. Now, strip mining you do not have access to until tech level 7, so when we get there, I'll do another video on it. But right now, no one has access to strip mining, um, and I have some old footage, but it's from the, the beta. But I'm going to talk a little bit about strip mining and how it differs from regular mining. And we're going to talk about the different ventures, the fits. Uh, basically, all of the timestamps to the different sections will be in the description below and in the pinned comment. You guys can go and check them out. So let's get into it. We're, we're 1 minute 50 into the video. I've not even talked about anything relevant. So let's start talking about the ships. I'm currently an adventure trainer because it costs about 40,000 ISK on the market. But you also get adventure trainer for free from the advanced tutorial 2, which you can see here. So you'll get adventure trainer for free from the advanced tutorial. Now let's have a look at that ship fleet. Let's take a look at at um, the ships that you need to be concerned with when you're considering going down the mining route. Um, and obviously, the first four ships that you'll have access to all the way up until tech level four is going to go, sorry, tech level six is going to be the venture all the way up to the venture three. Now, they differ in slight ways. The Venture Trainer is the most basic. Two high slots, one mid slot, two low slots, and two sets of rigs on either side with a single drone slot. Um, warp Stability 1, Minor Yield per Mining Level at 5%. And honestly, the drone stuff, um, I would never really bother worrying at least right now about drones uh with the ventures you're probably not going to enter into combat and we don't have access to mining drones at this current state in the uh, state of the game so drones maybe when they introduce mining drones drones will become relevant but you're probably not going to get into many battles in a venture so don't worry too much about the drone bonuses that you see venture warp stability 2 15 percent minor yield um, per mining level. The, the things that you really want to pay attention to when it comes to the ventures is the overall defense, the flight velocity, and the ore hold capacity. There's a lot of other stuff there, and you, you'll be able to compare them, but realistically, how quick is your ship going, how tanky is it, and how much ore can it hold? With the Venture 1, uh, 1,500 defense, 4,000 meters cubed of ore hold capacity. And you look at that and upgrade on Venture 2, uh, Venture 2, you get the same warp stability, you get mining yield plus 25%, um, and you can see 1,700 defense, but a 6,000 ore capacity. I believe um, it is, I'm just going to double check, yeah, 5 meters per second quicker, which is not a huge amount. Then you compare that to the Venture 3. Now, when you go to the Venture 3, you might think, but wait a minute, Excandro, the minor yield per bonus level has gone down. But that's because if you compare it to the Venture 2 slots, the Venture 2 has got two high slots and then one extra low slot compared to the venture one the venture three has got three low slots two mid slots and three high slots so you get a slight decrease in minor yield per mining bonus level but you do get access to another slot that you can put a miner on uh, and again scan resolution and drone effective hp don't worry too much about them but what you're going to have here is 1900 defense another five movement speed uh, f5 ms and 9000 ore capacity so the venture three has the biggest ore capacity of the three and that's the one that you're going to want to get into asap so that's the difference between all the ships. When it look when you start to look at something like the retriever, that is the strip mining um, 
ship. So the Retriever is a strip mining ship. You get access to it at tech level 7. You will not be able to access any strip miners right now. So do not worry about strip mining because it is not something that you'll be able to access for at least another 500 or so hours uh, from this point onwards. Uh, but when we get to tech level 7, we will have access to strip mining and I will talk a little bit about it and how it differs from regular mining. But let's look at a fit for adventure now. Okay, so I actually, on this on this particular clone, I am not invested in mining skills whatsoever. So I don't actually have that much for my venture. But what I'm going to talk about is what hypothetically I would put on my uh, particular ship. Okay, so obviously when it comes to... Um, the mining slot, the high slots, they, they do not want to be weapons. Do not put weapons on your venture. I saw someone in the Eve Echoes Discord um, tell, or, or one of the desk Discords, tell them to put some um, blasters on their, on their venture and go around shooting other mining ships, and it was hilarious. Put miners, obviously. The best level miner that you can get your, your hands on. Most of you, that'll be Mark V miners for the, for the time being, but Mark III miners are also perfectly fine. Every high slot wants to be a, uh, a mining uh, laser. And again, strip miners will not work at this current point in time. Mid slots, it, I personally, I don't think the mid slots right now really matter, but I've just put um, a stasis web of fire on because that can slow down. For instance, the, the majority of um, threat, I think, is going to come from uh, frigates. So you're going to probably be attacked by frigates that will just be hyper speeding in and then trying to warp jam you and kill you. So a stasis web of fire can help you out um, and can help you buy some time and kind of close, get away from them. When it comes to low slots, uh, the low slots are up for debate. Like some people like to have shield booster, shield boosters. They can be like good in a sort of a clutch situation. I personally think like a warp core stabilizer is is massively important. You add that to the roll bonus of the the uh, the venture, you're going to have a, a very high warp core stability, which allow you to warp out of most situations. I then either like to have a micro warp drive or a afterburner. Uh, a micro warp drive will help you burst away from someone and, and then immediately try to warp out, which is definitely possible. An afterburner will just give you um, increased speed overall. But you could consider a shield booster, like I said, or a, a, you know, like a, a, like we said previously, a um, a, a micro warp drive is going to be perfectly fine too. So all of those are, are, are like acceptable additions to the low slots but honestly warp core stabilizer is a, a really good one and then i'd even have a, a, either a micro warp drive and a uh, an afterburner if you really want to um consider having like the, the sort of the, the get out of jail free cards realistically but um i do like having a warp core stabilizer um i think uh, I, I think it's one of the more important things because you know the, whenever you're getting attacked in like a mining setting you are going to be um essentially threatened with a with a warp jammer straight away so a warp core stabilizer will help keep you safe in those particular scenarios oh just to be aware um you can't activate an afterburner and a micro warp drive at the same time but you can have them fitted to the same ship so if you have three low slots and you want a micro warp drive and an afterburner um that is something that is obviously possible to do but you need to activate them at separate times as far as i'm aware i know that was the case in eve online so i don't know if it's the case now uh but i'm pretty sure you can't activate them at the same time so just be aware that if you're looking you use the micro warp drive to like burst like a really really big burst of distance and then you use the afterburner if you're looking to again um get further away or like set up for aligning or whatever you want to do so just be aware of those particular uh sort of caveats when it comes to to, to those two those two um low slots so when it comes to rigs the two that i would recommend is mining efficiency of course and then a minor circulation which decreases the activation time of the the miners if, you, if you're going to fit rigs especially like a venture three minor efficiency and minor circulation would be the two that i would recommend minor range controller just increases the range at which you can uh, mine and then a minor algid optimizer reduces the capacity need adjustment uh, adjustment which actually isn't that important Efficiency and circulation uh, are going to be the most important. Efficiency increases the the amount of ore that you you will uh, mine in, in a single. Um uh, activation and the circulation will decrease the activation time meaning that you're going to get more activations off per minute so those are the two rigs that i would 100 percent recommend in terms of like mechanical rigs um honestly there are a couple of things that you could consider but like a warp core optimizer is perfectly fine for instance um there aren't actually many great uh like ones but if you if you really really want to be safe because you already get plus two warp core stability with the venture but you could you could actually add more warp core optimizers if you want but it, it would probably be a little bit overkill um but there are 
a huge amount of mechanical rigs that I would say are, are absolutely necessary, but if you're looking for like really high optimization, minor efficiency and minor circulation should be the two rigs that you are looking to fit. Um, to your Venture 3 specifically, I probably wouldn't invest in anything below a Venture 3. But to a Venture 3, a minor efficiency and minor circulation, 100% look to uh, to lock those onto your ship. So we're going to go through some skills that will be useful when it comes to mining. Um, first of all, the easiest one to do is mining. Like you, you're going to want to get mining uh, up towards uh, level four at least, and then you're going to want to get access to advanced mining as well, uh, because as you can see, the the skill effects at level five and level four, you go. You get 40% minor yield, and then you get increased minor optimal range, and you get the reduced minor capacity need, which is always really nice. Um, level 5 will give you 50% uh, minor yield, and then again, 25% minor optimal range. When you get to level 4, which is usually pretty easy to achieve, you might want to then con consider going to advanced minor, um, because essentially level 1, which is much quicker to train than level 5 of mining, will give you 10%. And I would recommend training up towards level 3 at the very least, and then maybe going back to going for mining 5. So once you get to mining level 4, go to advanced mining level 3, and then go to advanced mining, mining level 5. Later on, you might want to consider strip mining. Strip mining is a different skill, uh, and again, it's something that you're going to want to do the same thing for. Go up to level 4, then get to level 3 in advanced strip mining, and then go up to level 5. Um, those are the main skills that you want to be what you're going to be uh, using when you're using mining specifically But there are other skills that you might want to use and there are other skills that you might want to look towards when um, Kind of considering your options further down the line and one of the most common ones that you might want to look at is is uh, ore reprocessing uh, and it really depends because you're obviously going to have to specialize in a particular ore. Uh, but I actually went for special ore reprocessing and I focused on mining spodumen. Um, but obviously, if you're doing pyroxeres, you might want to do on uh, sort of common, uncommon ore reprocessing. But essentially, this is for you to decide as to whether you want to be reprocessing the ore yourself or you're just going to sell the raw, um, the raw minerals on the market. Now, increasing the reprocessing level can be very useful because actually you can get a lot of money out of reprocessing the actual individual minerals that you get from the raw ores uh, and it really depends on what kind of ores that you're going to be commonly repro commonly finding um i went for special and uncommon for the most part um rare i never bothered with because i never got there and precious i never bothered with but like i would would definitely recommend common uncommon and special because they're the ones that you're going to have access to read fairly quickly and they're also the ones that are going to be most relevant to the current market uh, especially if you're if you're mining pyro uh, pyrozeres or spodumen you might want to consider uncommon and uh, special or reprocessing and they're mostly the skills that you're going to be involved with you may also then want to level up trade and accounting so trade and accounting is going to give you less you're going to have more orders than the market with trade and you're going to receive less market brokers fee with accounting so definitely invest if you're looking to make money out of this you're going to want to invest in trade and accounting as well um specifically i would say accounting to make sure your margins are better but eventually you're going to want to have trade as well because you can increase the number of market orders that you can have at any one time which is also really important if you're selling lots and lots and lots of uh lots and lots of um uh, you know individual pieces of ore or lots of different types of ore as well so those are the skills you're going to want to have when dealing with mining. So now we're in a belt. So the way that you find a belt is you jump into a system, you go to the mining overview on your HUD, and then you go down to the asteroid clusters and asteroid belts, okay? And you'll see numbers associated with those asteroid belts and asteroid clusters. All of those, all those numbers um, sort of uh, uh, give you uh, an indication as to how um, rare the ore in that particular belt can be. And what you'll find is the lower security systems you go, the more likely that number is to be high, and the more likely you are to find some of the rarer ores in the game. Now, what I would say right now in the current game is that the super rare ores are probably not worth going for. So stuff like Bistot, Arkanor, um, Merkazet, they're not worth going for because no one's building ships or anything with those ores. In fact, one of the, one of the most like sought after ores right now is 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 pyrozeres and also i really like spodumen because um spodumen's got uh, a lot of really really important uh, ores used in a lot of shipbuilding right now and pyrozeres has also got a decent amount of ores so people are often going for those particular ores right now but uh, i'll talk a little bit about that when i get to my my uh, spreadsheet discussion because my spreadsheet discussion is is going to show you all of the information that you need to know when it comes to ores where to find them and also how to calculate how efficient how much money you can make with them 
But now we're talking primarily about the mechanics of mining. So what you do when you get into a uh, when you get into a system is you find an asteroid that you want. So I'm going to go lock on this score. I know I'm doing this Veldspar one. But we're going to unlock it now, okay? Um, so you can see this Scordite asteroid. So you have two ways of doing this. What you can either do is approach like this. I think I might have gone a little bit over here. We have gone a little bit over. We're going to stop and then we're going to mine. So you, you stop your ship at the, the optimal range and then you just begin to mine from there on out. Okay. So that's one of the ways of doing it. So you stop your ship at the optimal range and you just stay stationary. Um, this does mean that you have to build up speed if you're looking to warp out or you have to realign. So that's one way that you can do it. You can just stay stationary at the, the asteroid or you can do uh, an orbit and you can just stay moving at that optimal range at all time like this. And you can just orbit the, the, the asteroid and then mine as you orbit. Both are fine. Both, are, you know, it's completely up to you. And that is the basic premise of mining. And then essentially what you'll do is you'll go to your inventory and you go to your ore hold. And over time, your ore hold will fill up and you'll go back and you'll sell that ore at the market um, to make some money. Easy enough. When it comes to strip mining, um, so with, with individual miners, what you're seeing here is I'm targeting an asteroid and then I'm mining that specific asteroid. That's not what happens in strip mining. In strip mining, you will fly your retriever into a belt, you will activate your strip miners and they will randomly mine any asteroid that is in range. So any asteroid that is in range of your strip miners will be mined by a strip miner. You have no control over it. It's much more AFK than um, mining with a venture. But it also means you don't get complete say on what type of ore that you're mining. It's, it's usually used for mass ore accumulation. Um, and then you just take that back and continue to do it over and over again. You build up a huge profile of ores. With ventures, you can target a specific mineral um, and or raw ore. You can target a specific raw ore and then mine that. And this is what you do. You go like this until your ship is full. And then you head back to the market and you sell it. And that is essentially mining 101. And again, I have my warp core stabilizer in case anybody attacks me. I have my Weber fire to try and slow down ships. And you could either equip a micro warp drive or an afterburner to get you out of a sticky situation. But that is essentially all you need to do. One thing, if you're mining in a high risk area that I would recommend is either have a station or a stargate. And then you can, um, if, you, if someone warps into the system, immediately start to approach. And then you can warp. If someone gets into the system on an offensive ship, you can be sure that they're not coming to mine asteroids. So make sure that if anyone approaches um, and gets into the system, you align and then decide to try and warp out because that's the best way to get out of a situation. So the difference between mining and strip mining, I talked about it here. I'm obviously not going to be able to show you mining in uh, strip mining because we can't get access to it yet. But when we get it, I will show you it. But it's very easy. Essentially, you just jump into a system and you activate your strip miners on an asteroid belt and they will mine anything that's in range. Whereas with... Uh, mining with just just normal lasers with mining lasers you have to target an asteroid with a specific raw ore in it and you can be very specific about the types of minerals that you're collecting okay so that's good now i'm going to go through a spreadsheet to talk about ore efficiency um and again if you want to sell your ores in the market i have a market video about selling and buying don't need you i don't need to explain that to you it's pretty easy um but i'm going to have a spreadsheet now where i'm going to talk a little bit about how to calculate efficiency so i'll do that now so let's talk about my mining spreadsheet. This mining spreadsheet will essentially tell you whether it's worth reprocessing an ore or selling it on the market and what kind of values of minerals you're going to get per meters cubed of your ore hold, okay? If you would like to edit this document, okay? If you would like to edit this document, I'm gonna get out of Google Sheets right now, right? If you would like to edit this document, all you need to do is copy all of this. So make sure you copy all of this. Press copy. Okay, like that. And then as I've done here, paste it. All right, you paste it into a blank spreadsheet. And then it has all of the formula still going everything is completely correct. Uh, and you can use it as you would do my normal one. Do not request edit access. Stop sending me emails. I keep getting emails about edit access for this. All you need to do is copy and paste it. Um, and you should be able to do that. You should be able to just copy it, regardless of whether it's read-only or not, and then paste it into your own document, okay? 
If you have questions, my Discord link is there. I will tell you when the last time I updated the values on this is in terms of like the, the, the market price. Um, and again, I'll have a, li a link to my channel and there'll be a link to this video in this in this particular um, in this particular document as well. So let's talk about the first. Uh, oops, I've just done that. Let's talk about the first table. Okay, this table right here. This is the basic values table. All of the different type of ore is separated into common, uncommon, special, rare, and precious, and they're color coded. And then you can see the security ranges at the side here, where you will be able to find that ore. I, I don't need to read the list out to you, you can read it, but in general what you're finding is the rarer the ore, the further into null sec you're going to have to go to find that particular ore. So this is the volume of ore in meters cubed. So one piece of ore, the volume in meters cubed. Um, Merkazet is 8 meters cubed per one piece of ore, all the way down to Veldspar, which is 0 0.1 meters cubed per one piece of ore. And then got I've then got the total reprocessing values available here. And now each ore requires 100 uh, for reprocessing. Um, so as you can see, these are the total reprocessing values for Tritanium with 174 per 100 pieces of uh, Veldspar. Uh, and essentially, these are the all, all ores require 100 units to reprocess. And this is the total output per 100 ores being reprocessed. Okay. Then we're going to go down to standardizing the output. So this is the, the base value table. We're going to standardize the outputs per meters cubed. Now, why is that important? Your ore hold is in meters cubed. You want to know what values of minerals you're getting per meters cubed occupied of a certain ore that you are mining. Okay, so we take the ore volume, we standardize it per meters cubed in the sense that you're going to get 10 pieces of Veldspar in one meters cubed because one piece of uh, Veldspar is 0 0.1 meters cubed. So we're going to standardize it for the amount of ore you get per meters cubed in your hold. And that allows us to then essentially work out how much of the mineral we're getting per meters cubed occupied by that particular um, raw ore. For instance, Tritanium, 17.4 in you, when per meters cubed of Veldspar in your hold. You compare that to Spodumen and to Crokite, you're going to get 18 or there or thereabouts per meters cubed occupied by that particular um, that particular ore in your hold. Now this is important because as I said, each uh, each like mining ship has a certain ore hold capacity and you want to know how, mu how many minerals you're going to get from a full ore hold capacity of a certain uh, type of raw ore. So let's take uh, Veldspar, for instance, my Venture 3 is 9,000 meters cubed. I'm getting 17.4, uh, one second, I'm getting 17.4 uh, Tritanium per meters cubed of my, um, when I'm mining Veldspar. Let's multiply that by 9,000. A, a, a complete hold of Veldspar in my uh, Venture 3 will net me 156,000 Tritanium. And then we can use that to work out how much we're going to get for one like one like complete cycle, okay? Uh, and it's the same here with the rest of these. You can see you can work out how much uh, of a particular uh, mineral that we are getting per meters cubed of the particular raw ore being looked at. And then we're going to go down to this table, okay? So once we what, th these tables you don't actually want to edit. The tables that are currently uh, highlighted with the box are the ones that you actually are going to want to edit. So essentially, we're now coming down to a point where we're going to calculate whether it's worth it reprocessing versus selling on the market, okay? So right here, this is the reprocessing table. You don't need to edit anything that you're seeing in this table. You just want to edit your actual reprocessing value. Do not change the base because everyone has a 30% reprocessing um, value on ores. But you can change this to the actual reprocessing or uh, value that you get. And you can get that by finding the ore in your inventory or on the market hovering over it or, or long pressing on it and it will tell you your reprocessing efficiency so for instance right now i'm looking at veldspar um with the details of veldspar and at the top underneath veldspar it's telling me my reprocessing efficiency is 42 percent so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change my reprocessing value to 42 percent and you can see that this has increased the numbers in the table based on my reprocessing value. And that has actually impacted the total ISK I can make per one ore down here. If I change that back to 30, you can see that I make two ISK per ore less. Um, but if I have 42%, if I compare it down here, I'm just going to bring you down here. So looking at this, this one here, that says five ISK per ore. I change it back to 30. 
I'm getting three isk per or okay so that the only things that you need to edit I'm going to actually highlight these the only things that you need to edit are these particular values right here okay so only edit these edit these okay so then we're going to see how much you get reprocessing the ore versus how much you will selling the ore on the market and there are a couple of things that you're going to want to um change here So this table works off the values that are set in the table above on your reprocessing skill, but it also works on the values set here in the market prices for the particular minerals. So what you're going to want to do when you're trying to use this particular spreadsheet is go to the market, have a look at Tritanium, Pyrite, Mexalian, Isogen, Noxium, um, Zydrine, Megasite, and Morphic, and take the average value that they're selling at. Don't put the lowest value in. Lowest value will give you the, the, the most um, pessimistic out outlook, but if you take the average value, it'll get you a good read on what you can get for the market. So I updated these on the 29th of August today um, with the values that they currently have in the market okay um honestly right now minerals are quite expensive because everybody's building ships so um i'm actually finding the, the, these these minerals are selling for a very high volume but essentially you go to the market you fill out the the mineral cost and that will tell you and that will feed into this particular um that will feed into this particular uh, uh, uh column here and what you're going to do at the end is you're going to compare these two columns at the end okay so right now i can see if I reprocess Spodumen right here, even at base reprocessing value, I'm getting 319 per ore. But if I sell Spodumen in the market right now, I can sell it for three, uh, 370 per ore. And so you want to compare these two values. If the reprocessing value is higher, reprocess the ore yourself and sell the minerals. If the selling ore value is higher, sell the ore on the market, but don't reprocess it yourself. You also have to note that likely not many people are buying up things like um, uh, Megasite and Morphite and Zyrodine right now because they're not being used in a huge amount of building. Um, most Mostly people will be looking to buy Noxium, Isogen, Megzalian, Pyrite, the kind of the more basic building materials. So having a look at Pyro, Pyro is a very popular ore on the market right now. If I were to reprocess Pyro at base reprocessing skills, I would get 119 uh, ISK per ore reprocessed. If I were to sell the ore on the market at 150, which is it is right now, I would be able to sell it for more. But let's say that I had uncommon at 42%. I would get 160. Even with just a basic investment into uncommon ore reprocessing, I would get 167 isk per um, pyro um, reprocessing. Okay, so that's why you edit these up here, and it'll tell you the value that you're going to get based on current market prices but you need to add the current market prices in the bottom for the, the minerals here otherwise you'll not get an accurate reading you then also need to add the current ore prices over here to be able to compare you don't need them there you can just compare on the market yourself but i like i like the uh, the ability to just compare side by side what i'll get for each individual ones um and right down at the bottom, this is just a little table to show you um, the ISK that you'll make per meters cubed occupied in your ship. Uh, and that will also edit and, and, and upgrade depending on the, the values that you've put here and the values that you've put up here, okay? So essentially, um, that's based purely on uh, the mineral output. And again, not purely based on the ore prices, but this is just another little extra table that I thought might be useful. So that is a complete explanation of my spreadsheet. Uh, you have access to it. I'll put a link in the description below. I've made it a public document now. You can copy and paste it into your own spreadsheet and edit the values as you please. I will update it when I can, but I would thoroughly recommend that you make your own copy of it and use it that way. And that is everything on mining especially figuring out what's the most efficient to mine on the market right now and hopefully this spreadsheet is useful there are lots of other good spreadsheets out there by the way and you can find them on the the, the reddit but this is just a, a really basic one that i hope you guys can use and enjoy